Hey, welcome to another update on Archmage Rises, made by Thomas and Nick. Howdy. Is that what you say in Portland? Yeah, that's that's definitely what everybody says here. You're the south of the west? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, howdy, Nick. Welcome to an update of Archmage Rises. Did you know that this weekend, actually, when we're recording this, in two days, Canada turns 150? I do. I'm celebrating. How are you going to celebrate? Uh, I have a friend from Canada who was born in Canada, and then we're having a Canada Day party. <laughs> and usually a few of us come in and, you know, wear some American shirts and try to crash it, but it's a, it's a good time. How typically American of you. <laughs> exactly. Canada's trying to do their nice little thing in the corner, and the Americans are like, what's that? <laughs> Stomp all over it. Exactly. <laughs> nice. So I'm going to share it with you and our audience the super funny Canadian joke that my wife saw in the bank. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, I'm, I couldn't be readier. Okay, so how do you get a Canadian out of the pool? I don't know. How do you get a Canadian out of the pool? Will you please get out of the pool? <laughs> <laughs> she thinks that's the funniest joke about Canadians ever. I'm still not quite sure why, but... Oh, I man. would give it like a 3 out of 10. Yeah, that's probably my feeling about it as well. But anyway, she thinks that's really funny. Anyway, so Canada turns 150, <laughs> and we celebrate going to the Queen and saying, would you please give us a country? And she says, mm -hmm. yes. And then that's it. We celebrate. That's a pretty nice way to do it. I know. You know, you yeah. could just shoot at them for a while. That works too. Yeah, our story lacks kind of the Hollywood viability factor. Mm -hmm. Like if you were like, to make an Independence Day film of Canada, it would be like two scenes. <laughs> hey, we should ask the Queen if we could be a country. And then the, the court. Hey, could we be a country? Yes. And then that's it. Yeah, the US should have tried that. The rest is just like signing documents. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut all that out. It'd be a four minute film. It'd be great. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, or maybe Britain just didn't want us. <laughs> that could be the other thing. Like, you know, when you go to break up with a girlfriend and you're like, oh, this is going to be hard or whatever. And she doesn't really like you anyway. So <laughs> you start talking mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, how about this? How about we just break up? And you're like, what? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And then you get upset because they didn't like you enough, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Queen didn't even want us. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. So this week we're going to talk about, uh, some more of the design and uh, UI screens in the game, um, uh, because, uh, that's all there is to talk about. Um, cause there's a lot of work that's going into these things. So we're going to talk about the wealth and, uh, the NPCs and how we can see those two things in the game. So let's start off with the wealth screen. How does that sound, Nick? That sounds fabulous. Okay. Okay. So here we have the wealth screen, um, which is the second tab of our uh, character sheet. And uh, I will go through each one of the entries, again, not in great detail. And, uh, oh, I also want to say a special hello to Sawyer out there, because he's like six years old and he watches these. So, hello, Sawyer. Um, and we've had a lot of feedback, uh, good feedback on the previous uh, update where we were talking about the character sheet. So, uh, we'll see if we're two for two, eh, Nick? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so over here um, we show what the current year is and what your expenses and income are on all the various ways that you can make money um, within the game. And um, I like this one under adventuring. Found. How much money you just found lying around. <laughs> it's starting to expose some of the uh, weirdness about role-playing games. <laughs> you just run around find money. There's people mm -hmm. in the world starving to death, but you can somehow just find money lying around. Without a metal detector. Without a metal detector to boot. Hy hey, that should be a spell. Metal detector. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this is just an example. A lot of different ways that you can uh, spend money, make money. Um, and then the three most important things at the bottom for Nick, because he'll never read this top part. He already told me. Mm -hmm. um, that is the total money uh, that you've made so far this year. Uh, how much you have in your treasury, because that's important for paying all of your bills and commitments and then how much you're actually carrying around with you, right? So this number down here is the same as this number here when you're walking around. Um, and we have uh, navigation, so you go back and look at previous years so you can see what, you, what your progress is as you're playing the game. Uh, okay, next thing over here is the lands. And um, 
I think it's important, I think it's fun in a role-playing game to have land. Um, that's pretty much the uh, major reason why it's in here. So as opposed to just getting money all the time, um, something really rare and valuable is to get land. And uh, we will talk more about the land and land management. But the idea is you get land and the land does good things for you and you can do things with it. Um, and so in the, one of the inspiration games for this game is Pirates. Um, and in Pirates you would do things for certain countries and then they would give you tracts of land. So we've broken that down further, um, giving you like field, forest, uh, water mine. These, these may not be all of the types, uh, but these are the types that we're starting with. And uh, you know there will be spells, for instance, to be able to convert wasteland into an orchard or into a field or something like that. And so uh, the land gives you not only income, passive income, but also uh, gives you stuff like maybe grain or food or something like that. Anything more to say about land, Nick? Mm, nope, not yet. <laughs> not yet, okay. Um, then the next section we have here is followers. And there are different kinds of followers. I mean, you, you could have called this hirelings or something, but anyway, followers seem like a pretty good term. So there are workers that you hire in order to work your lands. Um, and then there are slaves that you can buy or capture in order to work your land so you don't have to have so many workers. So we can see this particular uh, player really likes slavery and is kind of against capitalism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, what, that's what this is saying. Um, so then the next thing is uh, how do you get your slaves? Um, the answer is you go and you capture people and humanoids and you put them in prison. And so this is showing how many prisoners that you currently have uh, taking up the dungeons in your mage tower. So if you don't have a mage tower, you can't do any of these things. Um, and uh, once you break their wills, then they can become slaves. Um, and then the next thing is apprentices. And apprentices are really super special and involve their own discussion. And I will save that uh, for when we talk about how you manage all of these different workers. So this screen is giving you a snapshot of like what you currently own. Um, as There's another screen coming up, which is for managing all these people. Um, the next thing is hirelings. And hirelings are the kind of uh, people that join you and go around with you, not necessarily like uh, to fight with you, but more of like you have a cook with you. And so when you are out on the road and you are eating trail rations, uh, your trail rations don't deplete your well-being so much. Or, my favorite example, which is uh, Sir Robin's Minstrels from mm -hmm. Python and the Holy Grail. So, um, you know, if you have minstrels, then they give you uh, an advantage to running away um, <laughs> and also help you uh, insult others. So, um, they're just buffs that you can get. Um, and uh, kind of take that idea from some of the Paradox games like uh, Hearts of Iron, where you have different generals or people in your cabinet. Um, and so that's kind of the idea of these uh, hirelings. Uh, Crusader Kings 2 has that with the kind of people that are in your court. Um, and so it's, that's kind of concept. Next one is pets. How many pets you have? And um, pets are animals that are in your zoo or that you're riding around on. Um, and so this is just giving you a total number. It's not breaking it out. And then the final one is constructs. And constructs are really cool. Those are the golems that you're making, um, whether they're stone golems or iron golems or flesh golems or... Um, those kinds of things. So those are things that are created by your magic and uh, you're able to put them to work and do things um, for you. So those are the followers. Um, then the next thing we have down here is our draft creatures. And so uh, if you've played the pre-alpha, you'll know that you can do trading and part of that trading is having enough um, weight that you can haul around this stuff that you're trying to trade. And so uh, we just had like a simple list there and now we're gonna actually display it out. Um, we're gonna have generic icons for the different races of the thing. So this is a pony, uh, this one's supposed to be a warg, this one's an elephant, this one's an ox, this one's an ox. Um, and so uh, you can see all of the draft creatures that you have kind of in your caravan, uh, how much weight that they're giving you. You can click on them and then get more information about um, what they do. So that's how we cover that off. Then uh, the next thing we have is our tower library. And uh, this is giving you just a quick snapshot of uh, all the books that are across your libraries in your mage tower because you can build multiple libraries in your mage tower. And uh, Nick, why don't you explain how these uh, library bonuses work? Uh, so you get, basically you get a bonus to things when you uh, study them, when you study things, uh, or if you're in the blast chamber. But we're not talking about those things today, are we? 
<laughs> no. Basically, it gives you the option of either consuming a book um, to get the benefits from it or storing it to get a more long-term bonus. That's basically what libraries are for. Yeah, so you get these uh, books, um, and it might be a fire spell, and you don't, or you already know the fire spell, or so. And so, instead of that loot being a waste, um, you can shove it in your library, and it helps you um, to do research on further fire spells. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what this is showing. A uh, quick thing of, and then over here are the buildings that you can uh, buy and own throughout the world. Um, so we'll have some kind of symbol so you know what kind of building it is. Look at I chose a little house building. Doesn't that make sense? Jeremy That's pretty Jeremy? cute. And it's a little That's house. Pretty... Not my house. It's not, no, it's not huge, your house. Thomas. Your house is like three stories tall. <laughs> um, so I hope Roger keeps the little house idea. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I want a tube to the clouds, so... <laughs> That's right. Um, so, anyways, it tells you uh, it has some kind of icon telling you category the category of it, then um, what exactly it is, and then uh, where it is. Um, so this would be the city, and then you can click on that, and then that will bring it up on the map, so you can see where the heck this thing is. And then this is the current value of it. Um, and so when you build it, you can sell it, um, or you can shut it down. And there's a couple other options there. Um, and then uh, this uh, little thing here is an icon showing that this is actually a business partnership, like you've bought into somebody's business and you're sharing it equally, um, but unfortunately that feature has not made the cut for uh, the release that we're working towards in January, so that's going to be delayed to uh, some update or some later time, but I figured uh, I'd get Roger to make the icon right now anyway. <laughs> um, so. That's the list of buildings that you have in the world, so that's the, the wealth screen. Um, is there anything else to say about the wealth screen? Mm, I think you covered it. Okay, then let's talk about the uh, NPC screen. Okay, so here we have the NPC screen, and um, this comes up whenever you click on someone's head. So if you go into the inn and you see the innkeeper there and you uh, are talking to them and you like click their face you get this screen and this screen is a breakdown of that NPC and everything that you know about them um, are we going to be hiding some information based on how much you know them I forget uh, we talked about that I mean I think it would be good um, but I don't know I, I think we talked about starting with showing all the information and then we'll maybe cut it back yeah, we, uh, in our design sessions, we usually lean towards perfect information for the player, and then they can figure out what they want to do with it, um, as opposed to, uh, yeah, trying to shadow away some of it. Um, so, here we have a person and um, some of their core stats. Um, so, you can see things like how hungry they are, and then you can invite them out for a meal uh, with you. You can see their occupation, whatever. Uh, loyalty is how loyal they are um, to their lord, uh, the, the lord mayor. So, if you're looking to cause some anarchy, um, if you're looking to cause some anarchy within the world, um, this would be a good person to help you do it in their town because they don't like their lord mayor very much. Mm -hmm. um, the highlights is just trying to show special things like if you borrowed money from this player, which is definitely some from the player from the NPC, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely something you can do. Then uh, if this is a way of seeing like, hey, you owe them that money. Um, there's it also shows up in your time bar and stuff, but this is showing it by person. Then any interests and affiliations that you know of, uh, if you've discovered any of their secrets, um, and then a history of your interaction with that. Yeah. And then the whole rest of the screen shows a whole lot of information uh, based on people. And um, I tried to put a little symbol to show that this is like a family member, like they, um, they're related as opposed to uh, someone that they're not, like just a friend or something like that. But nobody liked the blood symbol, so we'll see what Roger comes up with. Um, and then some kind of symbol to show that that person's already deceased, but you know they did in fact have a mother at some point. Um, and uh, underneath is a little bar showing that character's relationship to this character right here. Not the character to the player, but to um, this particular character. So we can see their parents, their siblings, their pet, um, then their, their spouse, if they have a spouse, and their lovers. If they oh, look, you're, you're one of her lovers. I, She's been is. getting around. That's right. 
So um, that to me creates like interesting stories, right? So uh, this person is married. They don't have a very good marriage. <laughs> it's only eight. Um, and she That's has, cool, though. She has this uh, Romeo uh, lover and, uh, and the player. So we could see that, hey, she likes Romeo more um, than, uh, than the player. So you can knock off Romeo and knock off the spouse, and uh, then you're the only one in line. Nice. So that creates some interesting options. Then we have uh, the children of uh, this particular character, and uh, we had to make it a scrollable list view because you can have children with lots and lots of people. Um, and so we had to create a way of displaying that, that way to accept that data. Um, so all this is a good example of how we have the simulator with all this data in the background, and now we're finally actually showing it. <laughs> and they, maybe now people can appreciate what the heck is going on under the hood of Archmage Rises. <laughs> Um, okay, and the last section is uh, showing all the relationships. So the reason this is valuable is um, if we were to share uh, a secret with uh, Sasha, these are the people that it would go to in priority, right? So it's most likely to go to these top people, then kind of likely to go to these people, and then less and less likely to go to these people, right? So the idea is that um, these are the ones that she's interacting with on a regular basis. now. Well, see, this particular relationship, uh, with a big angry face on it, um, they're up here because they're a major relationship, and that doesn't mean they're necessarily on good terms. So, um, this is kind of where the uh, narrative Legos uh, kind of thing comes in with uh, Ken Levine, where if I do something against Claire Messner, then Sasha will like me more. And if I do good things towards Claire Messner, then Sasha will like me less. And... Um, if I was to go kill Clara Messner, then Sasha would be really happy. So, um, so that's how you can see that kind of information. So that's kind of why I lean more on the perfect knowledge side of things. So you can really see what your uh, impact is of, of your interactions within the game. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so those are the NPCs. Oh, something that Roger wanted to know. Um, so you could click on any one of these people, right? If you click on this person, then it'll show this whole screen with uh, that person's information, right? So what happens when you click on the dog? And I told hmm. Roger that it just fills in with dogs. It's just a dog, dog, <laughs> dog, dog, <laughs> oh dog, 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 dog. Um, and uh, we don't have time really to build all that in. So um, that's probably going to be in an update um, after the game releases that we'll do the... Uh, the whole pet lineage and all the pet, <laughs> pet relationships. <laughs> oh, that would be very important. People will just be uh, clamoring for that, you know. Can you spread get... rumors in the dog world? <laughs> That's right. First, you have to learn how to speak dog. That would require a spell, <laughs> the spell of dog speak. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that's what we have to say and show for this week. And... Um, I am going on vacation for a couple weeks, but we're going to uh, record a couple of these uh, updates um, so that everybody can get their Archmage fix every Monday, even yep. though I'm away. Okay, anything else to say there, Nick? Nope. All right. Okay, well, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.